And how you doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? Welcome in to another gathering of the Concurpas. It is the Wild Side Live. I am your host, Eric Clark, saying thank you for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with us on a sunny, beautiful east side of Music City, USA. Thank you to everybody who is joining us in the chat, and especially thank you to our moderators, Ruthless Biscuit, HCH, Marika. I think I saw someone else up there as well. No? No. Okay. So uh, they're here to keep all you knuckleheads in line. Yanni, Yoni, I hope I said that one correct. Rodri is here. Uh, saw Susan. Susan, condolences. Um, I've got, it, it makes me feel bad that I've yelled at mine for the past couple of days. They've been driving me absolutely nuts. I got to go, speaking of nuts, I got to go get them taken care of. Maybe that'll calm them down. Hey, KK, thank you to everybody for hanging out with us. Marcus is in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to all of you for taking time out of your day. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Hit that like button. Help out the algorithm for me, if you will. All of our socials are linked down below from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, ways to help the channel, Patreon, PayPal, all that stuff. Most importantly, it is the Discord server. Make sure you're over on the Discord server. Um... Our chats get a little, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in, but sometimes I'll just drop in there and just say random stuff just to see if anyone is paying attention. Um, so it's been a crazy bit of a morning. Before we get started, I do want to say thank you to Connect 200. Rick was on the ball today, so I was having some issues with my, yes, there is a slight delay. It looks like there's a slight delay. I'm sorry. Um, I've been trying to work on this for quite some time now let me see if i can do something on the fly yeah i've been this has been driving me crazy this little lag delay because i don't see it on the screen so i don't know where this is happening um let me try something here i don't know if this is going to fix it um i'm hoping it does i doubt it will the audio is a bit off. Yeah, Marcel. Um, I've been I've been working on this problem for quite some time. This capture card, the getting the settings right. I, I have been watching faster than sound. I, I don't that doesn't give me any idea of like is anyway. It's been something I've been struggling with. And, uh, oh, it's better now. Okay, thank you. Um, is it better now? Can you hear me now? Because I just changed something. So if it's gotten better, let me know. It looks fine now. Okay. So to you, it looks fine. No delay with you anymore. Okay. Okay. So we're all good. <laughs> okay, is everybody good? All right, so today's been one of those days, man. I got up this morning, and the whole right side of my sound system was done, and I had no subwoofer. So um, no problem to some guys. Okay, the whole right side of my subwoofer was done. I had no subwoofer and no right channel, and I was like, did these cats chew through these cords? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm not messing with any of these anymore. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I thought, man, did these cats chew through the cords? So I went through the cords. Nothing wrong with the cords. I'm not a computer Windows guy, so I have no idea if it's an internal setting. Just like with this, just like with OBS and the live streams, I really need, like, an OBS expert who knows, understands cameras and FP. I don't. Okay, you have to understand something. This is so frustrating because I am so used to saying, okay, something went wrong, call the engineer. Engineer comes in, fixes it. I'm just this guy. That's all I am. So all of this, the settings, the graphics, it, I'm all doing this all, all myself, and I am completely ignorant to, hey, Chris O, you're right, it's Skid Row that Lizzie Hale is taking over. Um, so I'm, I'm getting frustrated trying to find this, this nice little – perfect balance and understand I want all my settings correct so that you guys have the best quality live stream reaction videos all that stuff I'm I'm a plug and play kind of a dude so I expect I'm I'm that rudimentary in my thinking 
that I say, okay, this goes here, that goes there, boom. What's a problem? <laughs> there shouldn't be a problem. So it's And it's little tiny things. It's little tiny settings. So I thought for sure that was today's issue. So I call my man Rick over at Connect 200. My computer guy built the thing, so he knows it better than anybody. I was like, hey, man, here's what's going on. He's like, well, I'm eating breakfast over here. Let me swing by and check it out. So we ran a test through my phone or through his phone, and it was not my computer. So I had to get in the car, drive all the way up U- U- 65 to Rivergate to where I got it yesterday. I didn't have the box. I didn't have the receipt because everything was fine until midnight last night. Everything was fine. And then this morning, for some reason, that's why I thought my cat chewed through the cord. So I'm waking up at 730. I'm pissed. You know, I thought I could sleep in today. But now the cats are like, nah, bro, we, we, we're, we don't care if everybody has the day off. Our stomachs don't. So it's 530. We're going to start. My cats start parkour at 530. It's like that born. It's that, it's that Jason Bourne chase through Tunisia going on in my bedroom with these cats. That's why I got to snip them. If not to calm them down, it's just to show them who's boss, right, to establish my dominance with them. Like, if I take them to the vet and they come back without their nuts and I'm like, hey, settle down, they're like, yes, sir. Yes, sir, we'll, we'll settle down. Take any dude's nuts, he'll settle down. So anyway, they start their parkour at 5.30. And I always do the, you know, I'm not a mean guy, but we've all kicked our cat. <laughs> we've all, we've all, eh, get the hell away from me. Probably our kids, too, if we, if we, were, if we were being honest. So they start the parkour at 5.30. And I got one of them that's basically a pigeon cat. Do you know what a pigeon cat is? A pigeon cat is the cat that walks around all the time going... Doesn't meow. Doesn't scream or holler. Just walks around going... I think it's code. I I, I think it might be some kind of code. I don't know if he's calling other, other transformers in. I don't know what's happening. But I swear it's some kind of cat universe code. And all the other cats are like, I got you, bro. I know what you want. You want me to go knock that shit over? And I think he's like the puppet master. Yeah. So anyway, they start their parkour at 530. We get up. I feed them. Do the thing. Litter box. Here's your fresh. God forbid you crap near your own crap. You dainty little prince. Let me help you out. Let me scoop everything for you. Get it fresh. Spray the little stuff in there. While they sit there and look at you. <laughs> you know, come on, hurry up, Dad. So then I sit down, fire up a video to watch something. You know, who knows what. God only knows if I showed you my YouTube history, you'd be like, dude, stop. So I fire it up, and I'm like, nothing's coming out of the left, out of the right. It's only coming out of the left. So I take the left speaker, put it in the right, and it's, it's okay, it's the port. I fi- I'm not that stupid. I have set up nightclubs and stuff. So... It's all good. I figure out through diagnostics and testing, it's the subwoofer in the right channel. So I drive all the way to Rivergate at 10 o'clock in the morning on Easter weekend. Any weekend, that stretch of road is, you know, just, you know, man, just punch me in the nuts, bro. Just would you nerds get on some teleportation or something? I don't know what's going on. I, it, it's ridiculous, and I can't go this other way. So anyway, I get there. I'm all frustrated. Don't have the box. Don't have the receipt. Luckily, I'm me, so people remember. You know, it's not like you forget this, <laughs> okay? Not like you. This. This is. I'm not saying I'm unforgettable in a good way, but uh, yeah, you're not forgetting this this grill. So I go in. Guy happens to be there. Hey man, here's what's going on. So I actually show them. I'm like, hey, let's plug it in. I want to show you exactly what's going on. We plug it into my phone. And there it is right there in front of him. So he goes and gets another subwoofer, brings it up. We test it. And lo and behold, all is well. So right now, I think if I still, um, if I play a video, a vidya, as the old people call them. If I play a vidya, let's see. Let's start with the teams for yeah, you, you Anthony that. Bournemouth and Everton highlights. How'd that shake out? Anyway, I'll watch those later. Um, That's what I do. I get all the recaps. So everything seems to be fine now. So that was my day uh, thus far. Um, So it's been, it's, 
And then I, you know, and the sync thing is not during the live streams or during my recording. So if I sit and record something and I'm st I'm looking at the screen, everything is fine. But when I get it into my editing software, that's where the sync is a little off. And you know, it's it's no big deal because luckily my software I'm able to detach the audio file, so I can detach the audio and and, and video and you know slide them around and line them up so that doesn't and i've done that with audio tons of times so it's not a big deal it's just tedious dude i'm old i'm tired it's tedious someone make it easy for me <laughs> someone just make it easy for me man it's just tedious is what it is it's the same thing with the editing the videos and all that other stuff it's it's not it's not not fun it's just a little bit of a grind um it can be frustrating when you can't figure out the problem you know, that's what it is. Um, I, and and here's the here's the issue is that I know it's going to be something stupid. It's going to be something stupid and it's going to be something simple. That's it's it's always that way. It's either going to be something stupid or something simple. Right. Thanks. No problem. Yeah. So your cat wakes you up and your days off work six amber running back and forth on me. Yeah, that's stage two. That's stage two of their parkour. So when the normal banking themselves like Tony Hawk on the side of my bed and all you hear is the skittle of claws screeching their way across my fine flannel sheets onto my polished hardwood floors and all you hear is just the scraping of their little claws and you're like dude you have a scratching post why and they're chasing each other and they're mama cat so I base oh dude it's it's like it's like a three ring circus in here. It really is. It's like a three ring circus. The mama kitty is the indoor outdoor cat. And she's got the little stubby tail and the clip deer. And she's she basically lives in the shed, hangs outside. And she's an outdoor cat. Still to this day, won't let anyone pet her. But she's friendly enough to, you know, lie on the floor next to you. But she's a, she's a hood cat is what it is. So uh, she comes in and out. And she does that, you know. I'm in, I'm done, I'm out, I'm done. And the other cats are like, hey, what's going on out there? So I'm thinking about I might get him a harness, you know, and a good leash, let him run around the backyard and have fun. If they'll let me put him in a harness, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with him, but it's madness. It can, be, it can be madness sometimes. And they'll sleep on my bed. And here's what these little bastards do. They sleep on my bed while we're all doing our thing, right? Because you know how cats are. Cats are like, uh, yeah, Mommy Cat has a name. Her name is Wednesday. Uh, she's named after Wednesday Adams because she's this little. I mean, if 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 you go to my Facebook page and my Instagram page, you'll see the most recent photo I posted of Midnight. And there's a reason we named him Midnight. If if Midnight is pitch black, this cat's 1202. The the fur I, and I've said this since Mama Cat was a kitten, that her fur is the blackest, the um, the glossiest black cat fur I've ever seen. I, I have I have never seen a cat whose fur is that like when you see it, it shimmers almost when she's sitting down it's it's hard to see in a photograph but when you're looking at him it's like the glossiest paint job on a cat and it moves so when they move it moves with them and it's they're beautiful cats they really are with these green eyes and midnight is the midnight and charlie are her babies so charlie is the tuxedo uh, with the Wilfred Brimley mustache, with the diabetes mustache, and Charlie is the solid black with a little tiny white, with a little tiny money shot right there on his chest. You know, it looks like he fired up. Anyway, sorry that <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. That that went that went sideways real quick there. <laughs> that went sideways real quick. But no, their fur is like this, um, this super high gloss black. So Wednesday is the mama kitty. And I, that's kind of what I, call, I affectionately call her mama kitty. So when I'll pull into the driveway, she'll suddenly appear at the end of the driveway near the shed. And then she'll wait for me to get out of the car to make sure I'm coming home. And then she'll run up the driveway, come up on the porch. And she, you know, does the whole glad to see you, 
um, happy cat routine, you know, rubbing up against stuff, tail, t- little stub twitching, you know, looking at you like, you know, you, cats are those cool animals like most animals are. You can kind of look them in the face and get an understanding, you know, where you are with them on the comfort level. Like if you blink at a cat and a cat blinks back, there's a comfort level there. So she's super comfortable with us, just not very affectionate. But, um, yeah, so they'll sleep on my bed all hours. And then when it's time for me to go to bed, they'll jump down and stretch and go get a snack. Now they're up. Now they're up. Well, now it's playtime. It's playtime for the kitties. Mama Kitty and the two little boys running around the house. They're all hopped up on friskies and taking a poop. They take these craps in the litter box and it wafts through the house and you're lying there in bed like, oh my God, why couldn't you do this at like 7 p.m.? Right? When I had candles going and I smoked. Why do you wait till I go to bed? And everything calms down to fill the air with your cranked out turd logs into this litter box for crying out loud. My God. Then they go running up and down the stairs because we've got an apartment upstairs where my son lives, and they like to go up there and do the chase. So it's... Oh. And then you... (laughs) I'll tell you this, though. I will say this. There's a sense of satisfaction. Uh, There's a sense of satisfaction when they're pissing me off running up and down the stairs, and I can tell when one of them falls. Right? Like, (laughs) Like, you can hear the... (laughs) <laughs> like you can tell that one of these cats fucked up and missed a step. Like you can tell that, um, yeah, they totally missed a step. <laughs> they just tumbled down the stairs. Yes. And then I, then I can put my head back and be like, oh, yes. And all was well in Whoville. <laughs> uh, it comes full circle, ladies and gentlemen. All is well in Whoville. Yes, Midnight is a, is a gorgeous cat. And I'm going to tell you this, Marika. His tail is longer than his body. So he and he's a and he's an idiot. Like okay, he's not an he's not an idiot. He's trouble. If that makes sense. He he's he's an idiot. He's a fucking idiot. Cuz he's he's that cat. He's got that face like, "Oh, hey man, I'm just a little fuzzy black bear. Look at me." See, this is cocaine bear. This is what this is this is cocaine bear. Because he's like on his back and he's got his little black fuzzy belly and you're like, oh, little fuzzy belly. And he's got the little cute face and the shiny fur. And you're like, oh, dude, this is awesome. And then he just wrecks everything. He's like, yeah. And then he sees his tail and freaks out. Freaks out like, you know, Chris Rock in New Jack City in a corner in his underwear. Just freaked out and going in a circle. Does it on the bed sometimes where he's like, what the hell, man? It reminds me of when I had an eyebrow ring. And that was my joke of it always made me go. Like this, because I had this thing hanging right there, and it always freaked me out. It took me a while to get used to it. So maybe it's going to take him a while to get used to having that long-ass whip on the back of his body. But it, it, his, the base of his tail, I'm not kidding you. This cat, I'm afraid to get him neutered, because you know how when you neuter a male cat, they'll beef up, man. They, they, they go beefy. They'll get beef on you. Mama cat did. Uh, Wednesday did. She's now a little teapot, man. She's a little... And, Poor girl, she's got the regular size kitty head, but then the big ass fat bin fixed body that cats get. So she's got the teapot. She looks like a teapot. Um, <laughs> she'll come running down the driveway, and it's like, poor girl, I should build a ramp. Um, so I already know when you pet the base of this cat's tail, especially midnight, and Charlie has it too. The base of his tail, I'm not kidding you, is this big around. It is massive. And his paws, like, like when you pet him, he's not a, like when you pet Charlie, he's like a, he's like a cat of the, of the Serengeti, right? He's like built for speed. Like you can tell petting Charlie, you're like, ah, that's a greyhound cat. That's a whippet, right? Charlie Hall's ass, right? Midnight's like Derek Henry, (laughs) big beefy and Hall's ass. And he's a beefy cat. (laughs) He's a real beefy kitty. And when you hold his paws, they're just huge. You're like, dude, I know when I, when I fix this cat, he's going to get to like 12, 13 pounds. He's going to get massive. He's going to be a massive cat. So I don't know what hood creature mama cat banged to get these two, but I swear to God, midnight's tail's this long. 
it, it's it's massive. Any thoughts on hairless cats? Okay, hairless cats are what other cats throw up. That's what a hairless cat is. A hairless cat is something that is slimed out of another animal. You feel like it's a newborn, right? Like, give it a month, it'll get hair. <laughs> yeah, midnight, your kind of cat. Yeah, he's a... Yeah, he's right over there. Um, he's he's when Mama Cat's not in. Here's the thing about these idiots. Charlie is spoiled rotten. Charlie is spoiled. If if you are giving anyone affection, if I'm jerking off, Charlie's like, hey, right? If you give anyone affection in the house, Charlie's up there. And he's like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? How dare you, sir? And he will literally just like get it. He'll just like climb up in front of you. If I'm petting Midnight, he'll come over and like push Midnight out of the way and then flop down and be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> right here. Hey, Mega Dog. When I'm sitting in my chair watching videos or playing a video game, he'll climb up and he'll do the like to where you can't move. He'll, he'll, you've seen him in videos where he'll get up here and he'll just, hey, man, this is mine. Yeah, he's very spoiled. He's a very spoiled kitty. Um, but, they're fluffy little kitties. And w- when I say about, you know, cocaine bear, that's where they get you, man. That's how they get you. They get you with that cuteness. And you don't understand how it absolutely, you know, you see these videos of these big ass dogs freaking out when a house cat goes at them. And it's like, bro, have you ever had a house cat go at you? <laughs> they actually think they're they're like, like jungle cats. <laughs> they actually think they are. And they come at you like that. Like that's that's no joke, man. That is no joke. Dogs don't come at you like wolves. Cats come at you. House cats will come at you like a puma. Right? Like, it's a different level of attack. It's a it's a stalk. Right? That's what it is. That's what it is, man. It's a different kind of attack. <laughs> Dogs just attack you. Cats figure you out. And that's weird. <laughs> that's where you're like, hey, ow. They know to go at the forearm. Right? They know to go right there. <laughs> Just right there. They don't attack anything else. If they attack your hand, they're not going to bite you on the knuckles. They're going to get you in that soft spot. Make you go, ah, and let them go. Then they'll go. What? 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 Touch it. Touch my belly. Touch my belly. And you're like, okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> so... This is magic they have over you. So anyway, this is how our day is going. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Greatly appreciated. There's some spamming in the chat today. I mean, it seemed like that. I didn't find anything. Just curious. Uh, uh, I didn't see any spamming. So anyway, make sure you're subscribed. Get over to the Discord server. We do live stream questions. But when we're doing a live stream, the live stream questions are for questions you have when we're not doing the live stream that you want me to answer during the live stream. Uh, If you have a question for me about anything, you're more than welcome to put it in the chat. If I don't want to answer your question, it's the, um, I'm not obligated to answer questions. I mean, I'll answer your question. I may answer your question with not answering your question, but I'll answer your question and be as honest as possible um, about it. Thank you, JP's other. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great rest of the day. So Mega Dog Chris O., I think I said hello. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Take care of your bartenders and waitresses. Speaking of Easter weekend, it is Easter weekend. Um, for those of us that observe such a, uh, not celebration, but an observation, um, I saw today, I'll try not to have too many rants, even though you're getting ready to, this is like, this is like you're getting ready to walk through the turnstile out to the parking lot to your car and suddenly the crowd roars. <laughs> That's So I saw today that the White House has decided to name March 31st um transgender visibility day. Because you can't because I guess everywhere I turn isn't some kind of a symbol or a flag or a group or an organization of it. So I guess we got to have a day for it now. And they've they've decided quite calculating, by the way, knowing full well 
that the Christian right, for the most part, are celebrating Easter Sunday. Now, Easter Sunday does rotate. It, it rotates on their calendar depending on the year, right? <laughs> Caesar. So um, they decided to make this. They, they could have made it March 30th. They could have made it April 2nd. They could have made it any other day. They're not going to make it April 1st. That's April Fool's Day. So they decided to make March 31st because it's not going to. Easter doesn't fall on March 31st, but March 31st. Okay. This is one of those. I know what you're doing. I see what you're doing, man. We all see what you're doing. This is not one of those subtleties. We see what you're doing. You're demoralizing the majority of your nation for some fucked up reason. It's this weird thing. I don't get it. I'm not talking about Christians or Catholics. I'm talking about regular people because most of us didn't grow up in the church. Yet, guess You know what we celebrated every year? Easter. My family never went to church, never talked about the Bible. Religion was never talked about in my house. But you know what we celebrated? Christmas and Easter. And we understood what those were. We at least had a reverence to the collective moral direction and turpitude of our collective society. And somewhere in the 1980s, that collective was not it stopped being improved and instead was there they started attempting to just get rid of it because they ran out of problems to fix i guess people did these little tiny groups of people who were offended that were celebrating easter go fuck yourself that's what we do if you don't the guy on the bus in england excuse me ma'am um i'm i'm observing ramadan which means i'm fasting and you're eating on the bus so? So what? That's going to happen, bro. There are people out here who do not observe the same things as you do. We used to have a collective understanding of not letting it bother us. No one had a problem with everyone in the United States pledging allegiance or in under one nation under God. Whether you subscribe to the hierarchical authority of that mindset or not it's just part of the culture bro it's just part of the united states and somewhere in the 80s we allowed these really small loud obnoxious fucking people to tell us to stop doing that instead of us collectively telling them don't do it then why do we have to stop our fucking carousel for you. And it's gotten so backwards now that the White House of the United States of America, if you think the United States and its doctrines are not slightly, basically modeled after Judeo-Christian values, which are also modeled after other collective societal tribal values that then became this this became that after 30,000 years of human beings living we have discovered a certain way of collectively living that benefits the most while still having some things wrong with it it's still one of the better ways to follow a society don't rob don't steal try to do this be a productive person basic shit that somehow has been labeled bad because it's Western European or Western whatever. Nobody's bitching at the Chinese. Nobody's bitching at the Japanese. Nobody's bitching at Russians. Well, sorry. I'm talking about cultural, them being Russian. Why is the United States suddenly taking it upon themselves to be in Canada too, to be the ones to go, you know what? We'll throw everything out the window and start all over again because these 200 people in this room really know better than the guys that built the whole fucking thing. And we let it happen. Luckily, it's, and I think this weekend might be a, uh, as they call, 
a bridge too far. A bridge too far. I think I think when you start really messing with bro, you're messing with Jesus, man. You're messing with Jesus, dude. It's like that lady in, in Canada. You're messing with rain. You're dude, you're messing with nature. You don't have to call it God or Allah or Jehovah or Yahweh or whatever you call it. Oh, I don't care. We all have a basic human understanding of how to exist among each other. What we think of that which we can't explain doesn't mean we should change how we exist. That's what freedom of religion is. That we're all supposed to go, okay, you do your thing, I do my thing. We're all allowed to do it. And that suddenly just became, see you, Yanni. Enjoy the show. So it's just this, it's like, dude, and you're messing, you're messing with, you're messing with some really bad magumbo here, man. You're messing with some really bad juju when you start messing with people's faith. And, and let me just say this to the, to, the, to the Christians out there. And I don't mean going to church. I don't mean knowing every Bible verse. I don't mean even believing yourself to be saved or whatever. It's not, what I'm talking about is people who believe that the basic tenets of that book are a pretty good way to live your life. Regardless of the minutia and the craziness and the way that it's been abused or whatever, the power that it's been given to people, watch Book of Eli, we, we're the ones that did that. What I'm saying is if you read the parables, cover to cover, don't be a dick. If, all of it. These are, these are just basic human things that are put in this book that is used to try to help other that has been abused. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Nothing has hurt the word of God more than human beings and our hubris. But our greed, our arrogance, our 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 need to to be end all because we are so scared of our own mortality. And yet, when I read the Bible, when I listen to these stories, I'm I'm taught this other lesson of, bro, you exist. There's your miracle. Who cares? Who cares how it's the understanding of it all, the whys of it, bro? You exist. Do you not get that? Okay, I get that. So how do we exist together? Okay, let each other exist. Let's try to... They're basic understandings. It's that joke that some Christians use of what does Bible stand for? Basic instructions before leaving earth. If you do believe in another plane, if you do believe in a further existence of your atomic breakdown, your energy, your pure energy breakdown, if you do believe that, Call it whatever you want, bro. But I'm telling you something right now. You still believe. You still believe that we should treat each other well. Call it whatever you want, dude. We, we Don't steal. Don't murder. You know, there's all these. Like I said, dude, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be religious to be like, don't be a dick. It just so happens that throughout history, we have allowed, just like any, the road to hell, man, it is paved with good intentions. It truly is. Because when you look at anything that is an advocate for the human race on any topic, on any subject, on any any aspect, it will always be hijacked by the worst. It may take a thousand years for that to happen. It may take 400 years for that to happen. It may take a week. But every time something good is thought up or created, it is hijacked and taken over by the very thing The only thing that could make that bad is corruption. When you look at the founding fathers, when you look at the the documents they wrote from the Federalist Papers to the Constitution, 
they were able to understand finally. We don't have to agree here. This isn't zero sum because this is a new, this is something new. So let's create something different and completely no one's ever done before, which is we all agree on these 10 things, right? We all agree on these 10, 20 ideas, right, of how to exist together. You call it a colony, we'll call it this, we'll call it that, but we share space. We share this 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 space that's not ours. And again, I'm not I understand what it led to and a lot of things that occurred from that point. But the very understanding of that concept was foreign to everyone at that time. So I just find it crazy that a, a, a greater stand has not been taken for those traditional values. I see it happening in Canada when you have politicians who want to, bro, again, man, yeah, be a good human, Gwen. Exactly, exactly, man. I, we are but a moment. All of that stuff is is out of our control. We don't know what's out there. We don't know what's over there. I'll, I'll, I'll translate it and try to understand it the best I can in my way, the way I'm only capable of due to my intelligence or experience or whatever. And you're going to do the same. But the one thing we all agree on, here's what's so crazy, man. Here's what's so crazy about it. No matter what your religion, no matter what your beliefs, no matter, we all agree on this. There's an energy we don't understand that exists in our universe. You don't have to, you don't have to believe in psychics. You don't have to believe in the paranormal. You don't have to believe in all of that to understand that there is an energy that exists beyond our comprehension. You don't even have to be a, a you don't have to be a theologian, you don't have to be a a, a, um, a philosopher, you don't have to be a magi, you don't have to be a Buddhist, you don't have, you don't have to be any of these to, to realize there's stuff out here that is way beyond our understanding and control. Way beyond. So okay. That's a great start, isn't it? Now we're going to argue about what it is. Isn't that funny that all humans understand? We have no idea what that other power is. But let me tell you what it is. <laughs> that's, to me, that's always, been, that's always been the weirdest psychology of that concept, religion. It's like, it's like, bro, these are all theories here, man. This is all theory. Is it a better place? We're told it's a better place. Now, what do you mean by that? Nobody knows. Okay, so why are we arguing about it? Because I can, we, can, we can both look at each other and go, well, you don't know either. So that's the point of faith. Even if you believe it's nothing, you still have a faith in that, okay, I'm connected to that. I believe that that. Okay, that's, that's your faith. But for me, when I see people argue about religion, my grandmother used to talk about Protestants and Catholics, about the di only difference was kneeling. Like, they're blowing up cities and buses because one kneels and the other doesn't. And neither one knows. Neither one knows. Now, what they'll tell you is we know what they want. They, they want you to be a good dude and blah, 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 blah. Okay. You don't have to call that Catholicism, Protestant. You don't have to call it that. You can if you want to, if that's, if that's how you and your little group want to do it. But none of us are right. None of us are. Because none of us know. So that's where faith comes in. It's like, bro, I have no idea. I hope. <laughs> you know, I have a hope, but... Nobody knows. Nobody has known. Nobody will know. So it's this crazy, when I see these conversations, I'm just, when, I, when people get into the conversations, I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to know about that. I want to know what that book says. Because that book was written at a time in a language I don't understand. And from what I understand, it's got some pretty good advice on how not to be a dick, how to treat people, how to create balance proper balance in your life so when you lie when you lie in bed at night you're at peace because that's what peace is for me peace isn't about when i'm done and gone 
I'm trying to find inner peace. I'm trying to find peace within my within myself. So how do I reconcile who I am? So that when I lie my head, when I lay my head back at night, I'm not sitting there going, fuck, I'm a horrible person. So I need to be able to balance, you know, what's a good pathway called enlightenment, whatever. But every culture, every species, not species, every culture, every ethnicity, every tribe has their idea of powers beyond us. Yeah, how's the heart? It's all you should care about. How many times in these videos when you hear such a great song, when I hear such a a beautiful piece of music and you're like, dude, I got to exist for that. That's crazy. That's a miracle. So when people say, I don't believe in God, I'm like, I don't believe you've lived. Like, you can call it God, call it whatever, but what do you mean you don't believe that there's something out there you don't understand? So you're... So you got it all figured out, huh? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, come on, man. It's it's like when people tell me they don't believe in in alien life form. Uh, when I don't believe in alien life form, it's like, what do you mean alien life form? You don't believe in alien life form? Do you understand science? Because those guys do, and they don't know, but the odds are, it happens, right? Like, it's. I remember we went to the, um, we went to the planet Arium. Sorry, that's a South Park reference. I hope you got that. Uh, we went to the planetarium and we were watching the Nashville night sky, um, episode that they had that day. So at the end of it, they showed, I don't know if you've ever seen this. <laughs> it's a photograph from a telescope at the furthest point out of our galaxy, right? Yeah, out of our galaxy, facing out of, looking out of the galaxy. And the photograph is just, it looks like a very starry night is what it looks like. It looks like a very starry night. And the guy on the microphone's like, yeah, those are all, galaxies that contain planets and we don't know how many galaxies or how many planets they contain so when when i see that photograph and i'm like whoa and then some guy's like i don't believe in alien life form you sure about that dude so you're telling me out of all those galaxies and all those planets this is it I just don't, I just don't believe that, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I do not believe the odds are in our favor um, at, at all. <laughs> I don't believe the odds are in our favor for that. Uh, when you see that photograph, it should, again, wake you up every morning saying, good Lord, thank you. I know I'm going to get mad today. I know I'm going to get pissed. I know I'm going to get, you know, whatever, but. I've got to make sure that I, I, I reinforce to myself, dude, this is, this, you know, hey, Eric, do you have any regrets? No. <laughs> no, dude. No. I don't know if it was put in me as a kid um, to, you know, maybe it's because of how I grew up and where I grew up. You either turn yourself over to the, Not the evil. You turn yourself over to the... Um, somebody had said something earlier about we live in our own little worlds. And those worlds can get very depressing. I think the more of the world you see and the more of the world you experience, the more grateful you become um, to be a human. I think, you know, it's like when you talk to an astronaut, ask them, if you ever get a chance to talk to an astronaut, ask them about what it's like, what does it feel like looking at the earth the first time from space? What does that feel like? 
and you're you're probably going to be surprised at their answers. <laughs> they 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 vary, but almost all of them are like very heavy, <laughs> very heavy answers, and they come back different people. And I think we like that on terra firma are the same. I think the more you go, the 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 more you see how big it is, how much there is of it, how how many different people there are, how many different groups there are beauty and architecture landscape you know all of it just the existence of life itself should should just blow you away every time you experience it i mean it's just it's just crazy it's crazy so when i see people stuck in their little under their cloud if that makes sense I'm like, man, you're overthinking this. <laughs> you're overthinking this. Life sucks. Life hurts. It's going to hurt. But you know what else? Every day you have one, it's awesome. That right there is awesome. And call it whatever you want. You know, think about it any way you want to think about it. But it's a miracle. Is there a universe in a snowflake? I don't know. Um, probably. I mean, to the... To the energy particles in that snowflake i'm not saying there's a consciousness there uh to understand it but i would say probably um i don't know that's a great philosophical question Um, it's a good thinker right there uh planet earth is blue and there's nothing we can do yeah those three songs i did the uh way back machine this week so i hope everybody appreciated those i did the um great white doing led zeppelin uh babe i'm gonna leave you i forgot they did a whole disc like they did a whole zeppelin tribute disc i forgot about that i know they did the track because it was done at the uh unplugged with uh damn yankees that was the damn yankees unplugged they did um, I did that one. I did the Greg Kinn band, the breakup song. <laughs> that That is a... Answering phones, man. People will call you with just such the craziest... Hey, uh, what's that song? He, he, okay. One of my favorite ones was... Um, this girl calls up and she says, I will bring you a dozen donuts if you can tell me the song that goes, I wonder, 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 wonder who. So you got to tell me what that is. And I said, well, it can only be one of two songs. I said, it's either uh, the Book of Love, which is probably not, or it's called The Lowdown by Boz Skaggs. And she was like, son of a bitch, you're right. So I played it, and uh, the doorbell rang about 10 minutes later. I opened the door, and there was a chick and her boyfriend driving off, and there was a dozen Krispy Kreme at the door. So she brought me donuts. For, but yeah, people will call me all. Hey, what's the song that goes bup 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 bup? And you're like, oh shit, um, <laughs> that was okay. That's a but that's the breakup song by the Greg Kinn Band, and that came out. So they had a, a they had a kind of a. It's what I I posted that on um, the Discord server that list of one hit wonders, and it's like the, people do that with the Greg Kinn Band, and they say, oh, you know, my Sharona. No, that's the knack. Sorry, the Greg Kinn Band was Jeopardy. And they think that's it. And it's like, no, 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 no. Hold on a second, man. Hold on. Don't do that to Greg Kinn. Greg Kinn is far more accomplished than being a one-hit wonder. Because he had, the Greg Kinn band had the breakup song. And also, I believe, a track called Frustrated. Um, Frustrated. Frustrated. Because Greg Kinn was the very beginning of that post-punk rock and roll that we were just flooded with everything from the replacements and Husker do Greg Kinn band um god there were so many of them you could put the cars in there the early cars in there if you wanted to a lot of the post-punk synth bands coming out of California like um Martha and the Muffins uh Romeo Void were coming out with that you know crunchy straightforward rock sound with a little bit of synth and pop in there as well so I really like that track. And of course, one of the greatest albums ever recorded, the song Peg 
from Steely Dan off the Asia album. There's so much. When you look at a song like Peg by Steely Dan, it 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 makes you A, appreciate someone like Tuomas, and B, and Nightwish, and B, it makes you hate everybody else. <laughs> That's what it'll make you do. Um, just that song, Peg, is richly layered and super intricately, mathematically put together. Um, you know, Michael McDonald's vocals, I, I don't think I got into it, but Michael McDonald's vocals, and he talks about this in their little uh, documentary about the making of the album Asia, spe- spe- specifically the song Peg, how Michael McDonald did all the backing vocals. And all they did, Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, all they did was... See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. Um, Paul Rogers, Roger Waters. You guys know I have that, right? Where I sometimes get those flipped. Paul Rogers, Roger Waters. Okay. Steely Dan, I have the same problem. Because it's Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. Yet, I also know of Walter Egan, who had a hit with magnet and steel and because my brain is a fucking card cataloged organized by monkeys on crank i I have no idea why when i think of steely dan walter egan is in my head and i want to call one of them walter egan so when i talk about steely dan you have to know the first thing in my head is don't say walter egan (laughs) it's not walter egan it's donald it's shit now i forgot Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. See? See? (laughs) See where I'm going? See where I'm going with this? Yeah, Steely Dan is, bro, it's, it's not, you're not going to get better than a Steely Dan track. Uh, Michael McDonald, the, the vocals that he had to put down for that track were super complicated for him because he's, he's singing in one register and Walter and Donald are like, can you bring it back this much? And he's like, I don't sing there. <laughs> and they're like, can you bring it up this much? And they're talking, you know, these really minute changes in his key and in his register. And he nailed it. Nailed it. And when you play the song back and you listen to it, that's three, four tracks of Michael McDonald just going in the studio and, and singing the same one, and then, okay, now do it like this. Okay, okay, now do it like that. And, I mean, they, they t- you talk about being perfectionist. Steely Dan is not a band. It, it's something that a lot of people get confused about. Steely Dan is not a band. Steely Dan is two guys who hire musicians. <laughs> That's who they are. <coughs> Excuse me. Steely Dan, like Jeff Beck, is not a band. Um, they hire musicians. The, the guitar solo... Uh, the guitar solo for Peg, I think, was the seventh or eighth one that they had come in and audition. And the reason they liked it, and when you hear the other solos that they had for that song, they're good. Excuse me. But they're not Steely Dan, right? And that's, they're good, but they're not Steely Dan. So this guy comes in, and he lays down this guitar solo, the solo that you hear in the song. And people don't think about it until Donald Fagan says something. And then you go, oh, my God, yeah. Because Donald Fagan said, man, I really like this solo because it had a great Hawaiian groove. Oh, shit, dude, you're right. You're right, it does. It's got this great Hawaiian swing to it. That is a crazy, it's this crazy aspect of the song that when you realize what the layering is going over, then you've got a Picaro brother in there from Toto. You've got this drummer that's just a, one of the best Sessions drummers on the planet. And you have the, this great rhythm guitar by Walter Becker. Um, uh, no, yeah, Walter Becker's doing the, the rhythm guitar on it. Um, just a phenomenal track, man. And talk about built perfectly. Because I talk about that on my, on, in my videos about you know, songs being layered and, and how to do it perfectly. And Steely Dan is a class on how to layer and engineer music. Just um, reeling in the years way too much, sorry. Um, great track. 
Uh, Bill St. James hosted that show. No, Bill St. James did Flashback. I can't remember who did Reeling in the Years, the uh, syndicated radio show. That was one of the shows I, I ran uh, when I first started in radio. And I believe that's from Gaucho. I believe, right? No. No. Um, shit, it just left. Oh, shit. It's not Gaucho. It's not Gaucho. Um, fuck. I want to have to look it up. Son of a bitch. Croucho Marx? No. Gaucho. Like the uh, the cowboy. Like the cowboy. Um. Oh, Can't Buy a Thrill, son of a bitch. I can remember, I know the album cover, so I, I was picturing the album cover, but I, I, and for some reason I had Leave Him With a Smile or something like that. Um, yeah, but Eat Him and Smile is a David Lee Roth album. See? See why I can't do that? See? What a great song. What an absolute, 1972. 1972, Can't Buy a Thrill, was when that album came out. Uh, Do it again, bro. There's no song. Do it again. There are two songs that if you said, what do the 70s sound like? Like if you could put the 70s, like like the 80s, if you could put the 80s in a sound, um, what would it be? It would be Melt With You by Modern English, Cars by Gary Newman, right? Like, like there's certain sounds of that era. And if you asked me what the, what the sound of the 70s are, there's two songs that, that say 1970s rock modern music better than any. One of them is Do It Again by Steely Dan and Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. Those two songs, OU812, don't mess with OU812. That's a great record from beginning to end. That's a great record. Look, that band got people to join the Navy and drink fucking Pepsi Clear. That's how good that band was. That's how good Van Hagar was. They got people to join the Navy, and they got people to drink Pepsi Clear. So I'm not going to take away. I'm going to take away from that. But yeah, Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits is the perfect 1970s atmosphere in a song, along with many others. Um, you know, Do It Again by Steely Dan. A lot of Steely Dan, you know, um, Deacon Blues. Bro, that's another great, you know, you know, uh, Champagne's uh, Babylon's Sister, another one. Um, just fantastic 70s groove. But then you can look at a, 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 an album like the Doobie Brothers and you say, okay, man, China Grove. There's another great 70s jam, China Grove, um, Barracuda by Heart. Bro, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Barracuda by Heart. That's that. You, you hear words like hook, riff. Chicks did that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was awesome. And it and it's it's kind of not been done better since. <laughs> I mean, seriously. That was that song was is so heavy in not just the tone, but its impact. It was crazy. I mean, those girls came on the scene and just peeled skin away. And with that lick, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, little lady? Excuse me, miss. Does your dad know you're doing that? It's the dirtiest, nastiest chord. <laughs> you go. Yeah, Chris, that's a great song. My favorite Dire Straits song will always be Skate Away. It will always be Skate Away. There's something... There's something about that song that is so... 
what's the word I'm looking for? Groovy. And I mean groovy. Like you got to say it like that. Like like it's groovy. That's a groovy song. Skate Away. Just fa- absolutely fantastic. And I remember the video when I was a kid. This hot girl in short shorts roller skating around. Um, just great imagery. Great songwriting. And I think that that's something as well when you when you speak to people in today's world anyway, I think that that's an element of modern music that is sorely missed. Great storytelling, great songwriting. Um, whether it's a concept album or, or just a song, they were well written. They, they had good beginning, middle and end. It wasn't just screaming or, you know, throwing words out there. Um, there were nonsense songs. Sure. Uh, there were cheesy cringe, you know, Terry Jack's seasons in the sun, but I'll tell you what, first off, great harmonies. Secondly, that's a well-written love song. It, it hurts to hear. It's like Sunshine on My Shoulder by John Denver. God, I can't hear that song. I can't. I'll shut down. You can't hear that. They're just words, man. <laughs> They're just words, just music. Ugh, why is it breaking my soul? Because it's well-written. <laughs> it's a well-written song. And I think that when you when you see you know someone says what happened and i say everything went inverted so the influence for the bands of the 1970s the 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 popular the popular bands of the 60s 70s and 80s were influenced by a less fragmented far scoping spectrum of influence so when you listen to the doors you're listening to their influences growing up what were these kids exposed to coming up they were exposed to everything from jazz to big band to swing to rock and roll to soul to blues to all of it they were they were using all of that influence so when you listen to, you know, yes, yeah, Stray Cats is straight up big band swing, but there's also a modernity that Brian Setzer brings in because he's taking that influence that he loved, that rockabilly sound, but he's he created a modern attitude with those influences, and that's what these artists did. They took all of that influence from big band to soul to show tunes, everything, because there were such limited platforms to, to, to receive that influence. There were, you went to the movies, you bought records. Like there were, I mean, it was very, you know, you had to pick and choose. You had to be sure. So... When you got bored of listening to your music, you went and listened to your mom's music or you went and listened to your dad's music and their music went back to the 1930s and 1940s. So you're hearing all of that influence in this 20-year period. Well, come the 90s, the rock bands of the 90s are only really influenced by the rock bands of those times. They're not influenced by... Benny Goodman. They're not influenced by the jazz musicians. They're not influenced by the songwriters of their time. Because again, they were well-written songs. That's not what influenced them. They wanted to be rock stars. The 90s was, you know, late 80s, early 90s is when I want to be a rock star. So I'm going to write rock songs. Well, what is your influence? Your influence is you know, Van Halen, Black Sabbath, blah, blah. Okay, well, what about Little River Band? What about B.W. Stevenson? What about Three Dog Night? What about uh, Pure Prairie League? What about the Eagles? What about all these other sounds that we were inundated with that were all considered rock? It was it, You put on Amy by Pure Prairie League, it's not a rock song, but it rocks. It's a straight-up country song. Uh, country, folk, California folk, whatever. But it rocks. And that had to have influenced people the problem was the industry started to fragment and started to started to put everything into its compartments 
for for making money because now it's about oh Uriah Heap oh so now it's about pushing units whereas prior to the rise and popularity of guitar driven music i.e. rock and roll it, it was it was the fucking wild wild west just just go in a studio record your shit hit a radio station maybe someone over here and, and drop your okay maybe you can all right I just need someone to press a hundred copies so I can show you that you can press me a thousand copies. I'm looking for investments here. And something else, too. Something else, too, that really mattered. This goes to the um, George Thorogood. Let's go with George Thorogood. But my better example is Jay Giles' band. Jay Giles' band hit a, hit a monstrous peak in the 80s with the Freeze Frame album that gave a centerfold, freeze frame, etc. But when you look at the Jay Giles band hitting their peak in 1982, 1983, 84, they had been gigging for 30, I'd say 15 years. They had a decade at least of paying their dues. When you look at George Thorogood, same way. The musicians of that time that gave us this great indelible music that we worship, that 63 to 93, those musicians were different, not only in their influence, but how they approached, how they approached creating music. Whereas in the 90s and, and beyond, it became the factory. So they were only influenced. The influence then narrowed. It, it, they weren't picking up sounds and tones and beats and rhythms and things from all these other places. You know, Creedence Clearwater Revival went to Stack Studios in Memphis to find soul. They, they wanted to get, you know, they wanted a different sound because they were growing and, and wanted to get away from that boppy kind of tin pan Americana sound. So they were willing to explore these, even though they continued to make rock music. But once the industry took over, really took over that sound, that guitar driven four chord, three chord blues based rock sound. It can be acoustic, it can be folk, it could be psychedelic, it can be all these other things. But the one thing we wanted, it had to rock. Elton John rocks. Little River Band rocks. Black Sabbath rocks. They all rock because we are connected to them. They're, they're good songs. That's why. So Elton John is a master songwriter, and so is Bernie Taupin, a great lyricist. Um, Madman Across the Water. Uh, Madman Across the Water, it, it's actually two songs. Uh, Madman Across the Water, it's Funeral for a Friend. No, yeah, Madman Across the Water is written about Richard Nixon. Uh, Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, those are the songs. But no, Madman Across the Water um, is about Richard Nixon, I believe. Yeah. It describes all chicks went on that. Oh. 60 other famous guitar. Okay. No rock. No listen. Simple as that. Yeah, Chris. It's again, when, like, when you look at that song, those three songs, this is why those three songs are kind of a great example. Um, those three songs are a perfect example of the breadth, the breadth of our Generation X, our foundational tone. You've got Great White doing a song from the 50s that was made popular in the late 60s, early 70s. Doing it perfectly. Then you have another band, Greg Kinn, doing kind of a modern, punky, you know, poppy, rhythmic pop track. Then you have Steely Dan doing a jazz Hawaiian, <laughs> you know, progressive. Um, then the drummer, geez, the drummer's doing this really cool shuffle, Right? You know that nobody's wanting him to do, but he's doing it anyway, and the bass player is slapping, and he didn't want that. So the bass, you know, it's one of those early days where you're hearing a slap. So all of that, it's this wide. Pick up a band from the 2000s, shit's this wide. They're all the, you know, I'm an Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, and I'm like, what about, you know, Moody Blues? What about Atlanta Rhythm Section? What about Emerson, Lake, and Palmer? Right? Like, there are so many... There's so much out there. Um, Biscuit, what song would you like me to play? Um, live stream. Okay. Can I play it? Am I allowed to? 
because I will. I don't have a problem with it if I'm allowed to play it. Um, Nick, you're absolutely right. Luckily, we, we do have two of us, absolutely, without a doubt. But you know what, Nick? I think maybe it'll help our generation if we understand that he is the needle in the modern haystack. We grew up in the stack of needles. Hey, Tori reacts. Does, does that make sense, Nick? Tuamas, Aryan. These are needles in the haystack. We grew up in the needle stack. The dearth of talent that we had, creatively, exploratory, will never be matched again. It will never, ever, ever be matched again. So Tria would like me to check out this song called Big Band. Big, okay, it's called Soul with a capital S is the name of the track. Um, and the song is by Big Band Posega with Dino Jalusic. So let me get, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have had two hot dogs before the live stream. Um, little little gassy. Sorry about that. Burns the nose. But I'm sure you wanted to hear it. Um, so we're going to check this out. It's called Soul with a capital S. She says it describes all genres of music. Um, I hope this works. Let's see. Okay, so you guys can hear this, right? That's got a... Sorry, man, but right now, all I'm, I'm this is like Morris Day in the time right here, man. This is like I'm I'm thinking James Brown's getting ready to come out, coat to coat, a caught in the neat done in the hot tub. Like I'm really, it's got a great. This has a great, cool Spyro Gyra vibe to it. So yeah, sorry. In the hot tub. Oh, what's okay. hold, hold on, no. That's that's average white band. Pick up the pieces. That's what that sounds like. Yeah. Right there. Gave me that average white band vibe. Full screen, sorry. There we go. Oh, hey. Code to code across the nation. all kinds of music everywhere you go. Some folks like it fast. Some like it slow. Some like it hot. Some like it blue. Some like it old. And some like it new. <laughs> soul with a capital S Sweet soul music That's the best Soul with a capital S The whitest title ever Great song Music makes you happy Thinking makes you sad You could do the worst thing Do the best you ever had For entertainment found you to choose you and me my disagree cause I like the rhythm and blues now I'm a bit of disco I'm not saying punk is bad can set up for happy metal cause I gotta have that fun singing girls I love horn sections in a rock song, man. Oh, there's people who will tell you to get on with their ties. And it doesn't matter if 
for poem rhymes Hands to tend to tell you If I had to lose You and me might disagree But I'd like the rhythm and blues And I ain't saying that down The Oscar makes you fly Some fusion drives you crazy Now that's where the funk is at <laughs> with a capital S. So, with a capital S. <laughs> Sweet soul music. Uh. That's the best. So, with a capital S. With a capital S. Uh. With a capital S. So, with a capital S. So, with a capital S. Uh oh. Breakdown. Finish, big finish. Come on. There you go. That's a good track right there. Thank you, Tria. Big man Let me just say this, ladies in the audience, if your panties weren't already soaked from the rain. <laughs> That's a panty dropper of a song right there, man. Good job, dude. I bet they just throw pussy at him. Good God, I bet he needs like a trash can lid. Block that shit. All of it, too. Young, old, dusty, crusty, all of it. Take it. Take it. Bitches just throwing pussy at him. Good Lord, dude, that was a sexy tune. That's like Antonio Banderas kind of sexy. Come on. (laughs) Stop. Too sexy, too sexy. Too sexy. You see modern bands do that. Do that shit. It's like when I hear the song Baby Please Don't Go by Van Morrison. At the time, they were called Them. The original Address Me By My Pronouns band. Van Morrison (laughs) and Them. Well, they did a track called Baby Please Don't Go. Old standard song, been done a thousand times. But let me tell you something about that version. It's awesome. It is just blistering, panty-dropping awesome. It is the way rock and roll should be played. That is the way rock and roll is played. When the term started, that's what they were talking about. They weren't talking about blistering guitar solos and spitting blood and shooting flames. 
rocking, and rolling. That's where, that's rock and roll. That's what it's supposed to be. I've said it a thousand times. I miss horn sections in rock songs. They add such a crazy flavor to it. They bounce it, man. Or they'll put you, you know, they'll slap a a little tie off your arm and, you know, next thing you know, you got a baby crawling across the top of the ceiling. So, yeah, horn sections are the jam. And when used in situations properly like this, dude, that's just a, it's, it's again, you don't control what makes your foot tap. You don't control what makes your, your booty shake. And when people know how to tap into that, it's just lightning in a bottle. It's just pure magic is what that is. And I've always said that about Dino. His command of the English language is just really amazing. Um, so fluid. So um, natural. Like normally you, you would hear, like even when you hear ABBA, you're hearing, you know, hey, these are Swedish or Dutch, whatever they are. They're foreign. Uh, and they're all wearing unitards for some reason. They're all, we- they're all wearing mechanic suits. <coughs> but glittered. You can hear the the uh, the English, the edge to it, but when you hear Dino sing, and and what what tells me that he's got that command is how natural it sounds, like it flows, like there's there's no stunting in the pronunciation of his words when he's singing, so he's not he's not saying them wrong, you know, even though like like you'll hear that in some singers who don't speak English as a native language and I think he does so but which is good but anyway his ability to go between the the many is crazy but you'll hear people that speak multiple languages when they sing in English especially a soul song or um, a more basic song okay I don't want to bring this up again have you ever heard an opera singer sing a rock song and they pronounce every letter of every word, and they over-enunciate, and it really creeps you out. This is what I'm talking about. There is a smoothness, a relaxed disposition to the lyrics, how they are sung. That's what made Steve Winwood so good. When you hear him sing, especially his days with Spencer Davis, when you hear this little British kid sing, he sounds like a 30-year-old black guy from Memphis. (laughs) Not just the depth or the tone of his voice, but how he says the words, how he speaks the words. They are native to that source, that, Eng- that American source. So it, it's, it's very attractive. It's very attractive. It really is. Because it, it, it lends to your, okay, man, I trust this guy. Uh, so, But the dude's brilliant, man. The dude's brilliant. There are two songs I would love to see Dino cover. I mean, I could probably give I could probably give him ten songs that if he covered, A would be I know he would destroy them, and B they may put him in a different category. I'm not I'm not saying that I know what's best for Dino. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if he covered these songs the way I think, I think he can cover that song it would get noticed it it i think it would have a definite um holy shit he just pulled that out i think he would be great on a song like midnight hour right i'm going to wait the wilson pickett song i think he would destroy that track and i think he would also stay pretty loyal to its source and what he would do with that and modernize it he would kill it i think he would introduce a whole new audience to a a classic and that's where i think when i think of dino i think of someone who could expose people to songs that have been long since gone that people don't think you know if done because i i remember i spoke with during my breakfast with steve cropper I was asking him about Wilson Pickett. And I was like, what would he do with today's technology? He's like, you'd have to turn everything down at 50%. <laughs> He's like, you would have to t- you would have to turn everything down 50% to start. Anything connected to his vocals, you would have to bring down 50% just to start and then work your way from there. 
because he would he would kill these new dynamic microphones and all these amplifiers and preamps and shit like that and processors. He's like, he didn't need them. Um, he just needed a microphone plugged into an amp. That's what he needed. And he sounded that, like that. So if you put him in a, in a today's studio with modern musicians and modern technology, just what you would get out of him would be incredible. So a song like Midnight Hour by Wilson Pickett, I think Dino is perfectly suited for. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Because as you saw in that video, he's got soul. Have I ever heard a rock singer sing an opera song? Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. I got that one. I mean, I'm not saying they're doing it perfectly, but they're singing opera. They're they're singing opera in that song. They're singing operatically, if that makes any sense. There's an operatic tone to their vocals in Bohemian Rhapsody. Almost said Bohemian Grove, because people still think that's a thing. Or they think it means something, you know. It's like, yeah, they get together, dude. They're freaks. They're they're freaky rich people. They do stuff like that. Uh, but no, I think he would be great, like Midnight Hour. I think he would, I think Dino would do a great job on a song like um, Wasp Texas Radio by The Doors. I think he would, I think he would kill that track. I think that'd be a cool cover for him to do. Um, you might have to change a couple of the lyrics, you know, the Negroes in the field. You might have to change that lyric <laughs> to like workers <coughs> or something like that. But, uh, yeah, man, I think there's a lot of, a lot of these older soul based rock songs that I think he'd be suited perfectly for. Um, take me in your arms, rock me a little while that track made famous by the Doobie brothers, but I can't remember the name of the, of the lady that sang it first. Um, but yeah, take me in your arms, rock me a little while by the Doobie brothers. I think he would kill. And I think he would have fun doing it. Um, that's something else too. I think he would have a great time, you know, falling into that track and exploring it because it is, it is multi-layered as well. A lot of get, there's like double guitar, there's dual guitar, keyboard, I think two drummers and a horn section in that. And this, this vocalist is just, it's not Michael McDonald. He is just destroying Denny something. I can't remember his name. Um, but he's killing the vocals in this track. Um, but yeah, I think he would be perfectly suited for that. Dino is working on J2 right now and going on tour in two weeks. There you go. Okay. Well, maybe I'll drop him an email. You know, hey, man, what's up? Uh, that would be interesting. Hey, you don't know me, <laughs> but do what I say. Hey, you don't know me, but do my thing. Do my stuff. You're beholden to me. I've done a couple reactions on your videos, therefore, I'm important. <laughs> uh, I'm important. I have a YouTube channel. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. You know how awkward I feel when I tell people that sometimes? I'm like, yeah, if you want to check it out. <laughs> I'm a horrible self-promoter. I'm like, yeah, I got one. Here it is. I mean, I, I should be doing it more often, but uh, I don't. Uh, but I should. Oh, he knows me. Okay. All right. Well, hey, man, set us up a set us up a, uh, a Zoom call, and I'll try not to fuck it up. I'll try not to screw it up uh, again. We'll see if that can work out somehow. I'll try not to be a douche. I have some actual questions for people. Uh, speaking of questions, if you have one for me, throw it at me. Now would be the time. Uh, so... You want to know, even if it's personal, although, you know, be careful with that. You never know what you're going to get. I do have, you know, I am active on social media, by the way. If you do follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, I am active, but I'm not traditionally active because the three social media sites are three completely different social media sites. And we are, you know, what's funny. We are three different people, aren't we? We're completely different on Facebook than we are on Twitter than we are on Instagram. We are we are three different people on these three sites. Like Instagram is, you know, hey man, here's you know a picture of my cat. Here's a picture of my lawn. You know, I hit this golf shot. Here's a link to my video. Facebook is, you know, hey, happy birthday. Here's my son and birthday cake, and we got this going on and all this other stuff. Twitter is just like you know, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> That's what that is. So I, I look forward, I, I actually, 
I don't enjoy it because most of it is what has now been labeled as um, engagement farming. And where people are just saying the dumbest shit. I mean the dumbest, man. Just the absolute dumbest to get the engagement because now that you can monetize your tweets, people are just, I mean, let me see if I can. I'm sure all I have to do is pull up my Twitter page and and it's automatically the dumbest shit you've ever seen. Um, so let me see if I can get this a little bit bigger. That's what she said. Okay. I mean, I've never heard it, but I hear it's been said. Um, so, yeah, just looking at this front page of Twitter, it's just pure madness, dude. It's just pure madness. It's one or the other. There's no, like, there's absolutely no, uh, hey, Alley Cat, there's absolutely no middle ground on this at all. It's just craziness. Um, hey, Bad Mother Rucker, he's awesome. <laughs> he's awesome. He, he's got an active channel as well. Hey, I'm not a fan of possums. I'm an American. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of possums or opossums, whatever you want to call them. I find them to be, they're disgusting. I, I'm not at all a fan of them. Uh, what's my favorite female recording ar- artist that also writes most of her music? Well, well I guess Floor. Um, anyway. Um, gun opinions that get you this reaction. Yeah, it's all engagement farming. That's all it is. Excuse me. Um, Joe Biden just told all the Easter egg art decorators in the White House that no religious imagery is allowed. Okay, you're just stirring people. Of course, BMR has to reply. What old movie, 20 plus years, still holds up today? Not many. (laughs) Not many. Uh, Not many hold up today. But yeah, man, it's just, and it's, it's, so Twitter is just madness, dude. Uh, Twitter is just absolute madness. Kind of. Miss Benny Hill. Hey, Paul. <laughs> it's on my t- say, Paul follows me. He's good for a Benny Hill reference. I like that. Because that's how I treat Twitter. I treat I treat it like, you know, I say shit just to be an idiot. Just to get you, just to get people upset. Why not? I'm um, not a wrestling fan. Never been a wrestling fan. Don't know why. Uh, plus, every one of these, uh, I'll be careful. Every one of these um, posts when you click on the post, this is what Elon has to deal with and, and has to get handled, man. Um, when you click on these posts, no matter what they're about, there's like three or four comments, then it's all ads and bots, and it's just a mess. It is absolutely a mess. Um, it's just chocked full of it, man. It's just craziness. What do we got going on here? Oh. I haven't been keeping up with NASCAR. I used to watch it just to watch it. But not anymore. I don't know why. Just got bored with it. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted to show you the madness. Oh, shit. Sorry. I meant to do that and this. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be allowed to touch all this stuff. Uh, you can't stop me. You can only hope to contain me. No, no, no. I'm I'm I I don't I try to stay away from the drama. Stay away from it, man. It's it doesn't solve any pro- it doesn't it doesn't solve anything. It, no nobody has any answers because nobody wants to answer. They just want to keep the argument going. So that's why I watch videos. Bournemouth Eb- uh, Everton. I wonder how that Yeah, I'm going to watch that later. I do like watching people get arrested. So that's probably one of my one of my most common watches on YouTube is watching people get arrested. I enjoy it. I, I really do. Um, I I don't care. I, I enjoy watching people get put in handcuffs. There there's a there's a because I'm going to be honest with you. Most people deserve it. Most people do, um, especially in these videos. They do. I understand there's bad policing. I get I get all that. And we've seen those videos. But I really enjoy watching someone mouth off, talk shit, and then get put in cuffs. That's that's fun for me. I enjoy that thoroughly. It's a comeuppance I enjoy. That's why I used to watch live PD. Uh, to watch idiot criminals uh, get put in handcuffs for just being dumb. Karen's getting karma. Yeah. 
you know, putting your hands on police officers, spitting at them, threatening to kill them and stuff. It's like, dude, please body slam this guy. It's like that video of the two drunk parents at the beach. It's like this is where you're like, all right, man, um, I'm not saying I'm not saying bring back the, you know, knock them around kind of a thing. I, I, I'm more of a bro. Come on, man. So in the army, we had this expression, pull your head out of your fourth point of contact. Pull your head out of your fourth point of contact. What that meant was pull your head out of your ass. So, dude, this guy couldn't understand what this guy was saying. He was like, pull your head out of your fourth point of contact. You, you, you clear? And he's like, oh, no. So this drill sergeant made this kid, he goes, make an okay sign. So this kid made an okay sign. He said, take your index finger on your other hand and hook it into the okay sign like this. So the kid did this. And the whole time, this drill sergeant standing right in front of him doing it with him. And he goes, now, now, now squeeze your index finger with that okay sign. So the kid does it. And the drill sergeant goes, now go, now make this noise go. Like that. Go. Like that. And the kid goes, like that. And he goes, that is the sound of you pulling your head out of your ass. That is your fourth point of contact. <laughs> Comes from a parachute landing roll or a parachute landing fall. You have these uh, six, five or six points of contact. And your fourth one is your butt. And so it's like feet, knees, hips, butt, back, you know, kind of a thing. But, yeah, pull your head out of your fourth point of contact. That's all I want people to do. I just want people to behave, man. It's not that hard of an ask. It's it, Nashville is starting to experience this because of our downtown. Our downtown is now the spot where all the woo girls hang out and all the frat boys with their visors. Look, I'm telling you right now. If you see a white guy out in the wild who's had a few beers and he's out for the night out with his friends and he's wearing a visor, doesn't matter if it's sideways, backwards, forwards, upside down, right side up. If you see a white guy out drinking wearing a visor, get as far away from that dude as possible. Hey, Eric. Any white guy in a visor can't be trusted to behave themselves ever i've seen it in florida <laughs> i've seen it every i don't know what it is about a visor but for some reason guys put on visors here motley crew or lincoln park and lose their fucking minds see when i lived in florida i i started to learn about the i'm on vacation attitude and what that does to people not my town, not my streets, not my stores, not my blah, 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 blah. Okay? It does things to people. It lowers their give a shit about anything. And Nashville is starting to learn that. That you have flooded the downtown area of our fine metropolis with hundreds of thousands of people who don't give a shit. At all. But, yeah, that's a life lesson. Any white guy in a visor, stay away from him. I avoid him on the golf course. If I go out to play a round and they're like, hey, go over and play with those guys, and I see a guy with a visor, nope. Or I'll go and I'll just go. I'll just play away. I'm like, hey, guys, they told me to pair up with you, but I'm going to go ahead and boogie out first. I mean, I'll literally walk 18 before I play with a, vi a guy in a visor. Um, thank you, Tria. That was a great track. Um, yeah. Guys and visors. No, not going to happen. Not going to do it. Spring break anywhere USA. Well, my son had spring break uh, last week. No, two weeks ago. And his cousin has spring break next week. So it just depends on where you live um, kind of a thing. We always had spring break right at Mardi Gras. That's where we always had spring break, Fat Tuesday. Um, because in Florida, you know, it, Florida, it was spring break all the time. Thank you, Tria. Have a good rest of the day, darling. Take care of yourself and everyone else. Um, and thank you for your help. The um, Yeah, Nashville's starting to learn what happens when you create a, um, a haven for debauchery. Because that's what it is, man. It's a haven for debauchery. You've got, you guys know what a pedal tavern is. 
you know, there's pedal taverns, there's party buses, there's buskers outside of every doorway. It is loud. It is bright. There are, oh, I had to go, I had to go down to the Ryman and meet with someone. And they were like, hey, man, you got to come down and I want you to meet these people. I was like, man, what time do you want me to come down? He's like, 9.30. I'm like, fuck, dude. I have to go downtown Nashville, 9.30 on a Saturday night. Okay, just nail my balls to the chair. Then I can call and be like, hey, man, I'm sorry, but somebody nailed my nuts to the chair. I can't come down downtown Nashville because I'd much rather have my scrotum nailed to a chair like Bill Pullman in that movie. So I take an Uber. The guy has to drop me off at the top of this hill. Can't even go down there. Like He's got to drop me off because they, they cordon off this area of downtown so people can just walk anywhere they fucking want i'm not used to that that's a recent thing here in nashville uh you used to get hit (laughs) you'd get (coughs) people didn't give a shit at all and there was free parking like imagine that there was there there was free parking downtown nashville from friday 5 p.m to uh sunday midnight that was the craziest thing ever um it's insane so he drops me off and I walk, I'm walking down the street. I probably looked, you remember that song? One of these things is not like the other. That's how I had to look walking down the street. I, everybody around me, it was like, it would probably look like a scene from a movie. Like if a good cop was paying attention, I would have been shaken down because I did not look, I was not comfortable at all. Right, like I'm walking down the street. I actually lit a cigarette. Have you ever seen a drunken chick with a with a long ass cigarette talk to people? That's some dangerous stuff right there. That that's just that's really dangerous. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever been in a bar and seen a girl light an Eve cigarette while drinking a Zima and start getting chatty and she's handsy, you know? And you're just the whole time you're like, damn, dude. It's like a lightsaber battle with a drunken whore. And you're, you're like, you know, man, I don't want to be Obi-Wan. If I have to lose a hand, I will, you know, to get away from this. So I took that tack. I just lit a cigarette and kind of put it out in front of me. <laughs> it's like, if I burn you, I burn you, man. Get out of my way. I got to walk two blocks. It was madness. It was madness. It, 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 was, it was white noise after 10 feet. It, you you couldn't you couldn't tell what was what at all. It was just all noise. It, it it was like standing in the midway of twenty five carnivals stacked on top of each other. Yeah, right. Thank you, Eric. Uh, tastes just like cherry cola. That's when you know it's the live version. Yeah, that was rough. And I remember getting out of there, and I was I was sending my Uber a message like, "Hey, did I'll meet you here?" Because where I was, you couldn't come and get me. I had to walk up before I could even send it. I had to walk up another two blocks to the top of the hill. Man, I was so frustrated. And again, I I don't mind crowds of people if I'm the one on stage standing in front of you, but to be in the middle of all of you, it's horrible. It's absolute. It's it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It really is. Um, to be standing in the middle of people and the walls just start closing in and everybody just, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> just getting tighter and tighter. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube who live streams from downtown for hours at least on weekends. Sometimes I watch it and there are good bands and a lot of people partying downtown Nashville. Yeah, again, look, my problem is I am a bitter, crotchety old dude. That's my problem. I've been spoiled by laminates and backstage passes and a Nashville that doesn't exist anymore. There was, you know, there's a whole group of us and we are, our lamentations are many about how, man, I used to be able to just park across the street from Sabaros and blah, 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 blah. It was a great place to hang out. Duh, 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 duh. And now it's just, it's become commercialized. But I will say this, no city, that I've been to throws a party like Nashville. If you are of that ilk and of that disposition where you enjoy that environment and you would like to experience that environment, 
you will get none better than downtown Nashville Broadway. Broadway to the river, man. Boom. It's perfect. It's done perfectly. It really is. Looks good. Sounds whatever. It's it's more than you could ever hope for. It really is. It will over it is sensory overload in a good way. You're not going to see everything. You're not going to hit all the places um, you want to hit. My advice to people that come to Nashville, I ask them, how long are you here? A week. Okay. Three. Hit three places. Take the rest of the time to just walk around during the day because you're going to be worn out. But when it comes to the honky-tonks and the, the spots, pick three. Focus on them that you really want to see, like Ernest Tubbs Record Shop or the boot store or whatever, or Tootsie's or the Orchid Lounge or whatever, big-ass honky-tonk, Kid Rock's big-ass honky-tonk, whatever it is. Just pick about three of them. And that's just the the honky-tonks. Then you've got all these food places and all these museums and all these really cool things. That, there's the fish, right? There's all these uh, fish around the city that are stylized Nashville, you know, because we got catfish in the river. So there's all these catfish statues around the city so it's a great place it is it really is i'm just but i was like that way i was like that way in florida right so i didn't go to i didn't go to daytona beach for spring break are you are you are you crazy no i'm not going to coco i'm not going to the fort lauderdale no i'm not going to those places oh my god have you been <sighs> no mm-hmm I'm going to stay on the, I'll stay on the Gulf Coast over here and go hit some sleepy little beach in St. Pete if I want to go snorkeling or skimboarding or something like that or pick up chicks. You know, I'll go to local beaches around here because it's Florida. There's, lo- there's, there's tourist chicks everywhere. Do you know how many tourist chicks are even at the smallest little beaches? I'm not going to these places, dude. I don't like people, and people don't like me unless I'm dancing for them or doing whatever I do. So that's fine. I got that relationship. I'm totally down with it. I'm, I'm completely at, at peace with that now after 55 years. I get it. You don't like me. I don't like you. I'll get up and tell some jokes, and when I'm done, I'll go away. All right, how about that? And then you go, cool. So that's, that's our relationship, man. That's my relationship with people. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to rob you. I'm not going to you know do anything negative to you. I'm just going to get your attention. I'll get my fix, and then I'm going to head out. So, all right. But I don't like you. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm friendly. I'm super friendly. And that's the issue I was talking with my siblings about. And we're like, man, what is wrong with us? And I remember telling them because we're not nice. And my brother said, what? I said, we're super friendly. We're very friendly. We're very charming. We're very engaging. All of us are. All four of us are. We're, we're very um, extroverted people. Um, we enjoy that company of others. We enjoy the attention of others. Remember, I'm the quiet one. All right. But we're not nice. We we were raised to to speak our minds. We were raised to not bow to people. And, and you know, you either like me or you don't. I'm not going to go out of my way to be a jerk to you. So as long as if I wake up every day and I'm I'm going around saying, hey, I'm not I'm going to do the right thing. Be a nice guy. Say please and thank you. You know, stuff like that. That doesn't mean I got to sugarcoat everything I say to you because we were taught to be direct. As my father used to say, beating around the bush gets you dizzy and everybody hates throwing up. So you need to be direct with people, but also polite and, and firm. You know, if you have an issue with somebody, you should, be, you should be able to have a conversation with them, regardless of your age or your, or your, your, your place in the, the, the poll or whatever. You should be able to have adult conversations with people and be direct with them. And therefore, you know where you stand with each other because not everybody's going to get along. Not everybody's going to like each other. That doesn't mean we can't hang out. That doesn't mean we can't have fun. But we don't have to be friends. You know, not, we don't, that's not a goal here. The, 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 the goal is to be nice to others, right? That's the thing. If I'm, if I'm decent to people and I'm going to make mistakes, I'm going to treat people poorly, I'm going to screw up. But if, if the, the world's flipped, Right. See, I go out and I go, hey, man, just don't be in the way. Just don't cause a problem. Whereas now people go out and go, what, what's the problem? Give me, give me everything. And it's like, no, 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 that's, that's not how this works. Nobody owes you friendship. 
Nobody owes you being nice to you. Nobody owes you um, sugarcoating things for you so that you feel better about it. They owe you the respect of treating you like an adult. And as long as I'm, you know, at least some, and the, the military did that as well. You know, you should be able to say, hey, lieutenant, here's what I think. Hey, captain, here's what I think. Hey, sergeant, here's what I think. Regardless of your rank, we're all adults. So I should be able to speak to you as an adult. The problem is, is these really fucked up words in our world called right and wrong. And we, we assign them to things that sometimes don't have right and wrong. They just are. It's ambivalent. So we, we have to have that because that provides closure. So if, if I don't get along with somebody, I'm like, okay, I just don't get along with them. But most people will think, well, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why don't you like me? No, 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 bro. This, there's nothing wrong. It, it's not wrong. I, I guess you feel that way because someone doesn't like you. But that doesn't mean that it's wrong. But these words have been conflated through time and through other ways that it has poisoned people's ability to be pragmatic and balanced in how they a perceive others and how how others perceive them and and how you act right so i don't go out sitting here thinking you know well, that's right or that's wrong most of the time it's just the way it is there is you know what's that song by dave mason there ain't no good guy there ain't no bad guy there's only you and me and we just disagree there you go. See another example of why our music is awesome and everybody else's sucks. <laughs> because you can pull one line out of a chorus of a random FM hit from a guy who was in another band and that's that line hits like a sledgehammer. There ain't no good guy. There ain't no bad guy. There's only you and me and we just disagree. And whoever came up with the agree to disagree phrase should be tarred and feathered. Because agreeing to disagree is a disagreement. It's like saying we're going to prevent accidents. Do you know words? I don't think you know words. Because you say things like that. And that makes me think that you don't know words. Let's agree to disagree. Do you mean disagree? That's what that means. But when people say agree to disagree, what they're trying to do is exculpate somehow a right and wrong. I'm right, you're wrong, so let's agree to disagree. No, dickhead. It's just a disagreement. But when you say agree to disagree, they feel better. That's all it does. It makes me go, well, I'm still right. Okay, yeah, but so am I. So when people say, why don't you talk about religion or politics? I say, okay, no matter what you say, no matter what you say about politics, no matter what you say about religion, no matter what you say about music or art, I'm going to tell you, you're right. Now you give me the same. I'm willing to say that to you. I'm willing to say whatever you think about all of these things that are subjective, you're right. You are justified, you are righteous, and you are firm in your opinion. I give you that, but so am I. That doesn't make you wrong if those opinions conflict. Our actions are what are right and wrong. How we treat each other can sometimes be right and wrong. But for the most part, what is that famous British expression? It is what it is. <laughs> or they said in my neighborhood, it be what it be. Oh, is that going to get me demonetized? <laughs> so when I tell people at the end of my videos, try to make sure you do at least one good thing a day. It's not about, you know putting on a cape or opening a door or anything like that. It's about intention, your intention. Because if, if you go out in the world and you seek 
right and wrong. You're going to find it. And your emotions will ebb and flow with those discoveries. So if you go out seeking right and wrong, you will start thinking that way. It's got to be right or wrong. Well, that's going to tie into your emotions now, isn't it? If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. (laughs) All day long. Sometimes you just got to say, fuck it. It is what it is. And that's the, the truth. Everything else is overthinking. You're just overthinking things. Sometimes things just don't work out. As I say, some days you're the sheet cake, some days you're the fat girl. It doesn't mean it's wrong. <laughs> doesn't mean that anyone is wrong. Doesn't mean anyone is right. Right? Especially with the subjective stuff. Especially with subjective things. Things that are based solely on your personal experiences, your personal education, your personal upbringing. Again, something else that fascinates me is when people are shocked that people don't agree with them. It's like, well, I didn't grow up in your house. I didn't grow up at your school. I didn't live in your neighborhood. I didn't live in your world. So, of course, we're going to have two completely different views and understandings of my grandpa Clark was a son of a bitch. The son of a bitch. He really was. But I'll give him credit for one thing he said. One thing he said about the war, about the Second World War. He said, I can only give you my perspective. I can't speak for anyone but myself. So all you're going to get is one of a million perspectives. Because the guy standing right next to me on that landing craft that day, if you ask him what that day was like, he is going to give you a completely different opinion. He'll give you a completely different idea of what that day was, as they all will. Each man had their own experience that day, and they are changed forever. Their opinion of a lot of things changed that day. And you're no one to tell them that that opinion is right or wrong because that unique personal experience shaped that opinion, just like you. Your personal experiences, your personal life made you who you are, and it's a beautiful miracle. Start understanding that we also feel that way about ourselves. If you give each other that room, you'll find less to find wrong because everything will be all right. And that's all I want people to do. I want people to wake up every day and just appreciate the miracle of of just your existence. And everything else will be cool from there. Say, man, you're here, dude. We are here. You got to see things. You got to hear things. You got to taste and smell and love and hate and hurt. Joy. Felt those emotions. Those are miracles to experience. We're the only ones that get them. Yes, there's joy and all this other stuff, but humans are a miracle. Just try to wake up and understand that. Start there. Don't worry about anything else, you know, what you call it and, you know, things like that. Just try to wake up in the morning and start your day by just appreciating you exist. You are here. No one is like you. You are one in a billion. But so am I. Now let's show each other that respect, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, things will get better between us. Don't worry about the fluff. Just worry about the people you talk to and run into and and deal with every day. Start there. Eventually, you'll create that habit. And then the habit breeds perfection. And then you will eventually be able to put your head on a pillow at night, close your eyes, sleep deep. And then the asshole cats start their parkour at 530 (laughs) <laughs> so that's how that's going to go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the east side of Music City. Make sure you subscribe to all the social media, including the YouTube channel. Thank you to all of our moderators, Chris, Marika, uh, who got, uh, I think uh, Tria was here for a little bit. Thank you, Alley Cat, M Park, Yanni, Eric, Barton, Rodri, Chris, everybody for taking time out of your day and hanging out with us 
on the east side of Music City. Get over to the Discord server. We'll continue some fun and frivolity on your Saturday night leading up to our wonderful observation of Transgender Visibility Day tomorrow. (laughs) So, folks, have a great day. And I say it and I mean it. Thank you to everybody for taking time. Make sure you're looking out for each other. Make sure you're looking out for your neighbor. Try to do at least one good thing a day. I am Eric Clark. You are the best darn subscribers on the planet. And this has been the Wild 